All right, welcome back. This is going to be a continuation of my Ultimate Stock Racer video series that I started with my B6.4. And for this video, I am gonna cover motor tuning with a motor analyzer. You know, so the first video series I focused on the drivetrain and lightening those parts, and now I'm going to focus on optimizing the power of your motor. So um, I will be using this Sky RC brushless motor analyzer, and there's really three ways you can tune a brushless motor. You can use an amp meter and some people will adjust the end bell timing until they hit six amps. And if that's all you have, that's a good start. Um, the next increment of um, what I would consider better than that is using this motor analyzer. And then the most expensive, but probably also the most effective way to tune is using a dyno. Um, and, you know, if you do want a dyno tune motor but don't want to spend the time and effort to do it, there are services you can use as well. So when you pull this motor analyzer out of the box, you have this unit here. And then you have the cable here, which is to plug in for power. Um, and I had to modify mine because it comes default with four millimeter bullets and so I soldered on fives because all my batteries use fives. Um, and then on this side you have the sensor wire that you plug in and the the A, B, and C cables and you know they have colors but I just plug them in randomly. I really don't care too much about colors. Just make sure you hook them up to the motor the same. Um, so that's really all there is to this. And you get your motor and you hook it up. And for the motor, um, I'm using a McClon Team Edition 17.5 turn motor. Um, and I really appreciate um, James he let me borrow this so I could use this just to film this video. So I appreciate James letting me do that. Um, and then the technique I'm going to show you, it was actually taught to me by a guy that many of you know in the Pacific Northwest. He RDs a lot of our races out at Die Hard and his name's Brandon. So Brandon, I really appreciate you showing me this and um, we're going to spend some time to pass that knowledge on. Um, so yeah, once you get your motor here, really the first thing you want to do before you hook it up is you want to take this thing apart and make sure the bearings are in good condition and if they're not, replace them. Um, and then the other thing is, is these rotors oftentimes will have shims and you want to make sure that they're shimmed where they have just a tiny bit of play um, and then also I'll put a picture but you want the rotor to be as close to the sensor board as you can get without making contact and so I'll show you a picture of what this motor looks like. Um, I've already done that so I'm not going to take this apart on camera. Um, maybe we'll save that for another video. Um, so once you've done that, then you can hook this thing up. The sensor cable here goes in. I like to do that first just because it's a little more challenging to get in there. Okay, and then you're going to hook up, like I said. Actually, we're going to go this way just to make my life easier. So we're gonna hook up the A. I'm gonna go off to the side here. And then we're gonna hook up the B. We'll go in the middle and then the C. 
Um, and then finally, to power this thing on, you'll plug it into any of your uh, car batteries. You know, this the I use a 2S LiPo to do this, and you'll plug those in. All right, so we got the battery here, and we'll plug that in. And you'll see now that this thing it powers up. And it comes to a menu here, and you can move between the numbers. And the number one is the one you use to generate the data to time this motor properly. Um, number two, it'll actually calculate the true timing of each sensor in your motor, so it can show you um, if your sensors aren't exactly the same. Um, so we'll do that really quick here. All right, so then once it finishes, you'll see it says the average is uh, 47 degrees and each sense, you have one, two sensors at 47, one at 48. Um, anyway, I'm gonna start this whole process. I'm gonna bring this motor way down and I'm gonna start it at 25 degrees and we'll increment by five degrees until we get into like the mid 40s and then we'll increment by one degree from there to figure out the sweet spot of this motor and essentially is what you're looking for and i'll show you the data and go into this in more detail but is what you're looking for is there's a spot where your amperage is going to shoot way up and you're going to get minimal motor gains from that and once you find that spot, you back down a degree on the timing, and that's the sweet spot of the motor. So come back to this menu and push 1, and then you push Start, and then you'll move this wheel to spool it up to max RPM. And once that motor kind of tops out at max RPM and KV, then you want to cut it off immediately because you don't want to let this thing free spin for too long. Um, but as you can see, once you finish that here on the motor, it gives you KV, RPM, the voltage of the battery, and the current draw um, to get here. So this thing is at 3379 KV. Um, 26, 699 RPM, the voltage of the battery is at 7.9 volts, and the current is at 5.4 amps. And just to highlight, I should have mentioned this, it, um, when you do this, you want to make sure your battery is fully charged, um, and pretty close to fully charged. Um, this one's a little bit dead, like I would rather see this at like 8.0. I think most of the time, for whatever reason, this thing registers at like 8.1 volts. Um, so, you know, when I do this, I'll charge this battery to record the data. Um, I'm going to go through and I'm going to run all this data and then I'll show you this graph of what it all looks like and we'll talk about what's optimum for this motor. All right, so I recorded all of the data. Um, you know, to do this, I like to just make a table. Um, you can see really quick here, I made a table KV RPM, current voltage and timing. And then you don't have to graph it, but I just graphed it to really illustrate the point. So it's what we're looking at on this graph is the scale over here is RPM. The scale over here is KV. And along the bottom is current and amps. And so then representative, this uh, orangish yellow line is KV here. And the blue line is RPM. 
And I started down here at 25 degrees and I incremented by five degrees until I got to 45 degrees. And then I went by one degree increments of so 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, and 51 degrees of timing and actually even grabbed a 52 in there. And so is what you're looking at is when you jump one degree, how far across this way do you go? Because that means that's how much amperage you've jumped. And so you can see from 46 to 47, we jumped like 1.3 amps. Um, another pretty significant jump from 47 to 48, like another roughly 1.3 amps. Um, and then smaller jumps, less than an amp here, less than an amp here. And then another gigantic leap. Um, in fact, this was close to a two amp jump and um, pretty minimal KV gain. Um, so, you know, out here you're over nine amps. And so keeping the rule of thumb of six amps in mind, um, you definitely would never want to go out here in the nine amp region. Um, this motor was actually more linear than most motors. Um, but I would say for me, the max would be this 50 degrees running at 7.6 amps. Um, you would definitely need a fan and you'd have to gear appropriately um, and really watch the temperature here. If you want to be more on the safe side, um, then I would have this motor probably around this 48 degree mark, um, which really... Um, there's not a ton more to be gained here from here to here. Um, so this would be like the safe mark with temps. Um, and then you could go all the way up here. But again, you want to really check your temperatures and make sure you're doing what's safe to keep this motor um, properly cooled. Um, if you do overheat your motor too much, um, you'll ruin the magnets and potentially also cause um, other damages. So just, you know, be really careful of that when you first do it. Um, anyway, I hope you guys liked this video um, and I hope you can use this process to get your motors in top notch condition. Um, and if you did, please like and subscribe.